In this video, we will implement Cookiebene just with plain JavaScript, HTML and CSS because you need it for every single website nowadays. And this is how it will look like. We have here the banner on the bottom, first time when we enter the page. And here is text, by clicking OK, you agree for storing the cookies. And here we can click Accept, this banner disappears, and after page reload we don't have it anymore. So actually, if you don't know, in Europe, when you have a website, you must show a banner to say that you are using cookies on your website. And actually, just for you to know, there are different laws in different countries, which means actually this banner must be implemented differently in different countries. But in most cases, it is enough to have just a banner that the user can close and he won't see it anymore. But if you really need a banner as a library which supports different countries with their laws, then I can highly recommend you to look on this project. This is not sponsored, I just used it in my own projects. As you can see here on GitHub, it is slash Osano slash cookies consent, and this is a banner that you can style, and it is written in plain JavaScript. And here they make geolocation, and here they support different countries. But the goal of this video is to show you how you can create this banner by yourself. It is not that difficult. And here we will use just plain JavaScript, HTML and CSS. So let's start first with writing our markup. As you can see here, I have a prepared HTML page, which is completely empty. What we want to do inside body, we want to create div with a new class of our banner. For example, cookies, you, banner. After this, let's close this div and write our text inside. And actually here I will paste our text, by clicking OK you agree to store in cookies on your device, to analyze website usage and improve marketing. And after this we want to create a button, with which we can close this cookie banner. And here inside let's just write accept. Our markup is fully ready, let's check this out. As you can see here is our banner, no styles yet. So let's write them now. Here, as you can see, I bind it main CSS and it is completely empty. I just have here on the body resets for margin and padding. So first of all, let's style our banner. Here we can write our cookies U banner. And first of all, we must provide here a background, which will be 444. Then we need here a white color, this is FFF. We also need some padding, for example, 6 pixels, and font size will be 13 pixels. After this, we want to position our text on the center, so text align center. Also, it must be with position fixed, because it will overlap any content. This is why here, position fixed, and it must be on the bottom. This is why bottom zero, and width 100%. And also, it must be higher than our content. This is why here, let's set our z-index to 10. Let's check if it's working. I'm reloading the page, and here is our banner, but it is not on the bottom. This is happening, because here I wrote not semicolon, but just a colon. Let's reload again, and here our banner is on the bottom, this is totally correct. Now we just need to style our button accept. This is why here we can write cookies you banner and button, because we just have a single button inside. And here let's write first of all text decoration none. Also let's change the background to 222, and our color will be also white. Also we want to provide here a border, one pixel, solid, and here will be black, and also a padding. 4 pixels and 7 pixels. After this we also must provide a small margin, 2 pixels and 0, and our font size also will be 13 pixels. Let's make a bigger font weight, it will be 700, and let's paste here a transition to make this button disappear. After this let's create a hover effect, so here will be cookies banner, button hover, and here first of all let's provide the background, it will be white, and here is a color, it will be 222. Let's check if it's working. I'm reloading the page, here our button is black, and now on hover it is white. The only problem is that here on the button we don't have cursor pointer, which will be much better. As you can see now everything is working and our markup and CSS are completely ready. Now it is time to write our JavaScript and actually inside main.js I already prepared two functions. Why that? Because actually these two functions are not related at all 
to our cookie banner. This is get cookie and set cookie and typically you will have some utility methods that you can use to do that. This is actually get cookie with which you can get just a single cookie with this name and here you can set a cookie and provide not only name and value inside but also expiration days, domain path and secure if you need to. And actually for us the most interesting part is expiry date because actually we want to show this banner after for example 30 days or one year. This is why it is extremely important that we set an expiration date for the cookie. In this case cookie will simply disappear after specific time and we don't need to do anything about it. And actually if you don't want to retype this method from the screen there is a source code in the description box below so you can grab this method from there. Now let's write our code for cookie banner and actually I don't want to just write it like here because then all our properties will be inside window. What I want to do instead I want to create here an anonymous function and for this I will put here round brackets and inside I will create this function. Why I put here round brackets because I want to call it and actually this is IIF here function which is self called anonymous function and the main idea that with this code we isolate all our properties inside these functions. They are local properties inside this function and not inside window. And this function will be simply executed when we load this main JS. So what do we want to do inside? First of all we must find our DOM elements. And for this here I want to create first of all cookie banner. And if you are interested why I put here a dollar, this is the notation from jQuery where we want to show that this is actually a DOM element. And here we can write document.querySelector and inside we are providing our class cookies you banner. After this we also want to find our button and actually here we can also create dollar cookie banner button and here we can use dollar cookie banner to find a button inside it. Here we can just write query selector and here we have a button. After this we want to create an event listener to close this cookie banner. This is why here we can simply write dollar cookie banner button and we are adding event listener here and it is a click event and here is our callback. And inside this function we can simply just write console log clicked so we can check if it is working at all. I am saving this code and reloading the page, we don't have any errors. Now I am hitting accept and we are getting clicked inside our console, which means our code is working. So what do we want to do when we are clicking accept? We don't only want to remove this cookie banner, we also want to set a cookie in order to know that user already closed this banner. This is why here first of all I want to call set cookie function, we have it on the top and here we can provide a name. And actually I want to save the name here on the top and here we can write just a cookie name which will be for example cookies banner. Now here inside set cookie we must provide first of all our cookie name and secondly our state as you can see this is a value. In our case we can simply write inside closed so we know that user successfully closed this banner. And after we set our cookie we can simply remove the whole banner from the DOM. This is why here we can simply write cookie banner dot remove. Let's check if it's working. Here I am reloading the page, we see this banner, I am hitting here accept and this banner is completely gone. And now here I can jump inside application and here we have our cookies. But the main problem is here as you can see I opened here file. With file you don't have any cookies which actually means I must serve this index.html just like local web server. And if you have a VS Code for example or PHP Storm, you can easily do that. If you don't use them then you can use a package which is called serve. You can simply install it with npm install globally serve. And after installation you will just write serve inside this folder with index.html and as you can see here it will serve an index.html here on localhost 3000. This is why here I can just open this file but now it is served as a web server. This is why here we have cookies just like a normal project. And here now let's do this again. I will hit accept and this banner is gone. Now I will jump inside application. Here we have our cookies and here are cookies for localhost 3000 and here is our cookie banner with value is closed. Here we have our domain it is localhost and here the most important is expiration date. Here I will make it smaller and as you can see we have an expiration date which was set by default 
by this set cookie function. And as you can see here, we have a logic where we are setting this expiry date for the whole year. And actually, if you want to set this cookie, for example, for the month, you can simply provide here as a third parameter a number, for example, 31. And now we must write a logic to hide this banner on initialize, because every single time when we reload the page here, we can see this banner again. And this is not good. We don't need to show it to user anymore. And for this we must create an additional CSS class, because actually what I want to do, I want to put on our cookies view banner by default hidden class. And actually this hidden class can be super reusable inside your application, because it simply hides any element. Now we can jump inside main CSS and create here hidden. And actually this is just display none which means it is hidden by default, and then at some point we can simply remove this class. So let's jump back inside our main.js, and here now on initialize we must write logic to check if we need to show this banner. And for this we can simply check if we have this cookie. This is why here let's create one more property has cookie, and here we can just call get cookie, and here we are trying to get our cookie name. And actually has cookie is not a boolean, it is either our cookie or it is null. This is totally fine for the condition inside JavaScript. So here we can write if we don't have a cookie, then we must remove this hidden class. So here I can write dollar cookie banner dot class list dot remove, and here we want to remove class hidden, which actually means on initialize we are checking if we have this cookie, and if we have it, then here we don't do anything, we are not coming to this if. This is why we just remove this hidden class if we don't have a cookie. Let's check if it's working. I will reload the page here and as you can see on initialize we don't see our banner. Why is that? Because actually here inside application we have this cookie banner and we have a value. If we will remove this cookie banner and reload the page, then here is our banner. This is what our user will see on his initial visit. Now here we can simply close this banner and we are good to go. Which actually means it is not that difficult to implement your own cookie banner. You don't need a library for that. And actually if you are interested to learn how you can copy deeply nested objects inside JavaScript, make sure to check this video also.